Hey, I'm Tyler, and in this lesson, we're going to look at physical and chemical properties, and we'll see how these concepts show up on the T's. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you're really lucky, and that's because it's not going to be on YouTube forever. This video is part of my T's Chemistry Essentials full course, and I'm putting that course together right now. I'm filming videos on all these topics, I'm finishing everything up, and when I'm done with the course, I'm taking most of the videos off YouTube, but you'll always be able to find them on my website, teasinoneday.com. So be sure to go there and sign up now so you can get access to the full course when it's ready and when most of these videos disappear from YouTube. Oh, and lastly, if you have questions about the teas or about the science section, if you've got comments, you just want to say hi, whatever, email me, tyler at teasinoneday.com. I really want to help. I look forward to hearing from you and answering your questions. Okay, so let's get started. In chemistry, we often talk about the properties of a substance. A property is just a fancy word for a characteristic that can be used to describe a substance. For example, here are some of the properties or characteristics of iron metal, okay? Iron has a silver gray color. Iron forms rust, when it combines with oxygen in the air. Mixing iron and acid creates hydrogen gas, and iron can bend into different shapes without breaking. These are all properties that we can use to describe iron. Here's what you need to know about properties like this for the T's. Properties can be divided into two categories, chemical properties and physical properties. For the T's, you need to look at properties like these and figure out whether they are chemical or whether they are physical. So, let's talk about these two types of properties, chemical and physical, and understand the differences between them. We'll start with chemical properties. A chemical property is a characteristic that tells us how something acts in a chemical reaction. Now, how would you know that a property is talking about a chemical reaction? Well, there are some hints, okay? During a chemical reaction, substances might combine or break down. And during a chemical reaction, you make something new with a different chemical formula. Okay, take a look at these properties here and see if you can figure out which of them are chemical properties, okay? Well, Here's one right here. Iron forms rust when it combines with oxygen in the air. And there are a number of reasons here that we know we're talking about a chemical property. First off, it says that iron combines with oxygen, okay? That sounds like something that happens in a chemical reaction. Second, we form rust, so we're making something new, right? Rust is definitely new. It's different, over here, from shiny gray iron. And you may not know anything about chemical formulas here, but if you were given an equation or a diagram like this, you would see that rust has a very different chemical formula than iron and oxygen. So we are making something with a different chemical formula. Put all of these clues together and we know we're dealing with a chemical reaction when iron makes rust, and that means that iron forms rust when it combines with oxygen is a chemical property. Do you see any other properties here that are chemical? How about this one? Let's take a look. Mixing iron and acid creates hydrogen gas. Okay, what are the clues that this is a chemical reaction and that this description is a chemical property. Well, iron and acid are combining, and that's one clue. But most importantly, you make something new. You make hydrogen gas. You don't even need to know the chemical formulas for these substances to know that something new is getting made and the substances are changing. So this is definitely a chemical reaction, and that means that this is a chemical property. It tells us how iron 
acts during a chemical reaction. Now, the other properties here are physical properties, and these are characteristics that don't have to do with how something acts in a chemical reaction. For example, iron has a silver gray color. There's no chemical reaction here. We're not combining with something or breaking apart or making something new. Color is just color. So silver gray color is definitely a physical property. And here's another physical property. Iron can bend into different shapes without breaking. When iron bends, it's not a chemical reaction. It's not changing into another substance or making something new. It's just iron with a different shape. So that is why it's a physical property. So now that we've done a quick introduction to chemical and physical properties, let's look at a few more examples of different properties. We'll work to figure out whether they are chemical or physical. And then we'll look at some T's practice problems that ask you to do the same thing. For now, we'll put this little cheat sheet up here as you get a hang of this. First off, water is a clear, colorless liquid. Well, there's no chemical reaction here. This is just how water looks, clear and colorless, which means it's a physical property. Next one. Copper reacts with oxygen gas in the air to make a greenish covering called verdigris, which can be seen on the Statue of Liberty and other copper objects. What do you think about this one? Well, the word reacts is a pretty big tip-off that this is a chemical reaction. But there are other clues too, okay? It's talking about copper and oxygen combining, reacting, and it's also making something new. They're making this new substance called verdigris. So that means that we're talking about a chemical property of copper. Here, this solution of sodium chloride has a volume of 50 milliliters. Any chemical reactions or chemical changes going on here? Nope. It's a physical property. Next one. If you run electricity through water, it breaks down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. There are a lot of clues here. We're talking about water breaking down, and it's making new things hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and you can see that those have different chemical formulas from water. So we have new chemical formulas. All of those clues mean that we're talking about a chemical property here. Okay, we'll do two more that are a little bit trickier. Ethanol is flammable. What kind of a property is this? Well, flammable means that it burns easily, and burning is always a chemical reaction. When ethanol burns, it combines with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. We're definitely making new stuff with new chemical formulas. So this is a chemical property, and burning or combusting is always a chemical reaction. Remember that. Last one. Copper conducts electricity. Okay, this can be confusing for many people, but think it through. When we say copper conducts electricity, it means that electricity can flow through it. Do you think that's a chemical or a physical property? Well, a copper wire doesn't change into something else when electricity flows through it. It's still copper before, during, and after. So there's no chemical reaction here, and we're talking about a physical property. Okay, let's practice all this seeing how the T's will ask questions about these things. Which of the following are chemical properties of sulfur? Select all that apply. Now you might be thinking, oh no, I don't know anything about sulfur. I didn't know that I had to memorize its chemical properties. But you weren't supposed to do that. The question is asking if you can recognize a chemical property. We'll go through these one by one and check them out. First off, remember that a chemical property tells us how something acts in a chemical reaction. So A, it's pale yellow in color. There is no change here. Sulfur isn't reacting to make anything new. Cross it off. Okay, B, 
it forms tarnish when combined with silver. Uh, now, we're talking about a chemical property. Sulfur and silver combine to make tarnish. Tarnish is something new. Yep, chemical property. C, it combusts in oxygen gas to create SO3. Well, combust is a fancy word for burn. Combustion or burning is always a chemical reaction. And SO3 gets created, and that's something that is new and different. Chemical property. D, it does not have a detectable odor. Uh, this is nothing about a change here, nothing new. Cross it off. And lastly, sulfur is brittle. Brittle. That means that if you hit it, sulfur will smash into little pieces. Now, sure, that's kind of a change, but we're not making anything new. It's just big pieces of sulfur smashing into little pieces of sulfur. So this isn't a chemical property. And our correct answers are B and C. Which of the following is not a physical property? Well, remember, a physical property doesn't involve a chemical reaction. A, water is a clear liquid. That's just how it looks, definitely physical. B, Carbon combines with oxygen gas to create carbon dioxide. Ooh, sounds like we're talking about making something new. I bet this one is our chemical property. Methanol has a volume of up. Oh, we can stop right there. Volume, the amount of space something takes up, that's physical. We're not making anything new there. And D, a block of copper metal weighs 27 grams up. Oh, definitely physical. We're not making anything new. So that means that B is the one example that is not a physical property. Now here's a very common thing you've really got to watch out for on the T's. Let's look at these two properties of water. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Are these physical properties or chemical properties? They are physical properties. Things like freezing point and boiling point are always physical properties. Many people think they're chemical properties, ooh, and the T's will be waiting to trap you on this. So just remember that melting point, freezing point, boiling point, condensing point, all these temperatures where things go through state changes, they are all physical properties. And there's one more important physical property mentioned, and that's something called density. We haven't talked about it here because I have a couple videos that are just on density. But you don't need to know all the details about density to know that it's a physical property. You can identify density because it usually has units of grams per cubic centimeter written like this. Grams per cubic centimeter. Got it? All right. Let's finish up with two more T's questions. All are physical properties of zinc except for which one? Choice A, zinc has a silver gray color. Well, color is a physical property, doesn't have anything to do with the chemical reaction. So this is physical, cross it off. Choice B, zinc reacts with acid to form hydrogen gas. Okay, we have another substance acid that zinc is combining with, and hydrogen gas is formed. This is something new. So this is pretty clearly a chemical reaction, and I bet this description is a chemical property. Zinc has a melting point of 420 degrees Celsius. You should remember that state change temperatures, like melting, boiling, freezing, are physical properties. So we got a state change here, and this is a physical property. D, zinc can be easily bent or twisted when heated. If you bend or twist a metal, it stays the same metal. So this is also a physical property. So that means that B is the correct answer. It's the only property of zinc that's not a physical property. It's chemical. Here's the last question. All are physical properties of methanol, except for which? Its density is 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter. Ooh, density. That's a physical property. Really good thing to just memorize. Density, always a physical property. 
cross it off. It freezes at negative 94 degrees Celsius. State change temperatures are physical properties, cross it off. Using electricity, methanol can be decomposed to hydrogen and carbon dioxide gas. Well, there's an example of methanol reacting to create something new. So that's a chemical reaction, and C would be describing a chemical property. That's probably right. Let's look at D. It has a strong, pungent odor. That just tells us how it smells. No change involved, so it's physical. Cross it off, and C is our correct answer. Okay, well, that's it for our lesson on physical and chemical properties for the T's. If this video was helpful, if you like how I teach, check out the full chemistry course on my website, teasinone.day.com. It covers all of these topics for the T's. And if you have any questions or comments about the T's, about these videos, whatever, send me email to tyler at teasinone.day.com. Let me know how I can help. Best of luck on the T's.